What's going on? You back? Morrissey Sports Talk in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in one time for the one time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Won't we'll miss another video. And if you don't know by now, Kareem Hunt signed to the Cleveland Browns, leaving a bunch of Detroit Lions fans baffled on why Kareem Hunt didn't get an opportunity in the Motor City. Um, let's talk about it. And I can easily tell you why. The Detroit Lions, I remember a couple years ago, it was one summer where a whole bunch of their players in the offseason got into a whole bunch of trouble. And since then, they've been drafting guys from BYU and good character, well, outstanding character since. Uh, even if you could play at a high level, elite, and you wanted to, you know, you could be the best prospect out there coming out the draft. You could be at the a luxury in the fifth round, and you slide and you a trouble player. Um, they ain't signing you, the Lions. We've seen it time and time again. Trouble players sliding into the late rounds, and and you know other teams take shots at the, uh, take chances on the honey badger, and they took chances on other players that that slid down uh, low because of uh, you know behavioral problems or off the field problems in college or coming into the NFL. Uh, Martha Ford don't want no problem people, none whatsoever. They, she don't want nothing to do with you after the Titus Young thing, and then the string of lions that got in trouble. The lions. Only want high character play, uh, players, and if that means compromising a Super Bowl shot, then they'll do it. They just don't want that negative publicity uh, to be associated with the with the Ford Company brand and the Henry Ford brand in general. So that's just how they rock it, man. So it was no, it was never, it was never even discussed that Kareem Hunt could come to Detroit Lions unless somebody in the upper like management, you know, tried to convince Martha Ford like he can help us and this and that. She's a woman, and right now women. Um, pretty much they feel empowered that they pretty much got the man in a position of weakness, which they word against our word. And now the judicial system, the police and, and everybody else is taking the women's word. And even though we've seen time and time again, we see women renege on their stories or get caught over phone on phone conversations saying that they lied about, you know, men, you know, doing, you know, raping and domestic violence. It's been going on for years since Tupac had the case of Mike Tyson. And now it's being more publicized now that you got pit women coming from 30, 40, 20 years out saying that particular man did so. Then you got, you know, men saying they were, you know, felt on and harassed like Terry Crews in Hollywood. So you got the whole Me Too movement that women are going to take advantage. And it's been women out there that's already been taking advantage of it before the Me Too movement even came about. So the Lions just don't feel that, you know, they want to take any chances on somebody with, with, with character concerns, man. And I said that's weak, just like when people get out of jail and a felon get out of jail, he can't get a job, you know, nine times out of ten, he can't get a job. And I just feel like that's that's kind of, it's kind of flawed, as long as it's a non-violent felony or non, you know, stealing money or something like that, you know, I find that to be weak because I said, because, you know, everybody probably didn't did a crime, the majority of people, some people might not got caught, you might work with a guy next to you that got caught, that killed somebody, but you, he never got caught, you didn't know he got killed somebody. You may work with somebody across from you that sell dope. You know what I'm saying? He just ain't never got caught. You know, that's just how the game how the game is laid down. That's how I look at it, though. But that's the Lions have the same approach. The Fords have the same approach that many other companies have. Like, if you got an F on your report card or you got a criminal history, no matter how big or how small it is, they ain't going to mess with you. And that's how corporate America is because corporate America ain't never had to take – a lot of people in corporate America, I want to say – Everybody, a lot of people in corporate America ain't never had to take that chance. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never had to be poor and really take a, uh, take a chance out there and do what they need to do to feed themselves. And I'm not saying everybody that commit a crime is in desperation of a financial need or, or food or whatever it may be. But a lot of people are. You know, if we had the same yellow brick road as a lot of people in the white collar um, parts of, of business, a lot of us wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't even take the opportunity to do some of the things that that's been done in the streets or sell this or or steal that a lot of that got to do with financial means in your environment you know what i'm saying and that's just that's real you know what i'm saying but people won't understand that and people like martha ford that's in the white collar business part you know they don't understand what it's like to be in the slums they don't know the situation and nine times out of ten them type of people can survive with a lot of us surviving in the inner city on a day-to-day -day basis a lot of them could survive you know, on rummy noodles and Vienna sausages. And out here, you could be walking home and it could be a bullet flying up and down the street. 
It could be whatever. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know what it is to get up at 4 in the morning just to get at work at 6 in the morning or 7 in the morning to catch the bus and walk miles and miles. They ain't never had to really feel the struggle. And and that's just what an alliance organization is. It's so disconnected from their their workforce. You know what I'm saying? Like the players and the owners are just it's just a huge disconnect. They never understand what players got to go through. They don't understand taking hits to the head and it's how it's altering, it's moving your brain and it's 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 kind of counteracting your judgments or 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 you know making people make bad decisions. They don't know what it's like to come from a whole lifestyle of of you know I go to school and then pretty much. I got to do what I got to do to put food on your table. That's the disconnect between not only white collar and white business America, but it's a disconnect between the judicial system. It's a disconnect between the police. It's a disconnect from the from the from middle class to, to, the, to the first class people. It's a huge disconnect because they couldn't survive in our world. We never had an opportunity where everything is laid out like it is. We never had an opportunity to have a lot of people had nice clothes, nice shoes, nice jackets, and all that. Like a lot of our parents struggled with nobody. Our, our brothers and sisters and cousins was raising us, you know, and stuff for that. And she can never understand how to rehabilitate and how people could change with a little bit of structure. But, hey, you know, that's that's just a huge reason why that the Lions didn't sign Kareem Hunt. They don't believe in rehabilitating players and taking chances. They didn't take a chance on Janoris Jenkins. They didn't take a chance on a lot of people, you know. But then again, you got your head coach that was accused of, of, of rape way back in the day. And they act like they didn't know it. You think if that was a player, of course, they would have thoroughly searched the fuck out of that player. White, black, green, Simpson, yellow, no matter that player's color. And they would have knew that about the player. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they, sh they should have took a chance on Kareem Hunt. They should look take chances on giving players a second chance. Will some players fuck up? Absolutely. But you are now in no position not to take chances. You are the Detroit Lions. You are a middle to a small market. You're not L.A. You're not Dallas. You're not New York. Like, People don't desire to come to Detroit. So when you're in that position, like Cleveland and us, you have to take chances on players, on talent, talented players like that, just to maximize their potential, maximize our chances of getting to the Super Bowl. The Cleveland Browns are going for it. They're trying to win. Now, the Lions, I've never in my life seen the Lions actually try to go for it and try to go all in financially and taking chances on players. But they won't. As long as people continue to go down – to four field and spend that hard earned money, and 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 support medi mediocrity and support you know bullshit football, the the, the Lions gonna continue to basically sleepwalk for years and years until somebody else own the team or somebody else pass the team and really want to put a winner. Martha Ford is so disconnected. The Fords are so disconnected. The Lions are so disconnected from the reality, you know, of the situation. They believe people come down to see the Lions every Sunday because they, they, they think the Lions are good or they close. No, people just are optimistic and operate in blind faith when it comes to the Detroit Lions. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just what it is. They operate in blind faith. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just what it is. Every year, training camp sell you something else. And then when the season kick off, you don't bought season tickets and they got blew out by the Jets. And then... Matthew Stafford have a sorry performance with the San, with the San Francisco versus the San Francisco 49ers, excuse me. But, you know, it is what it is. The Lions are not the type of organization that's going to take chances on high, high on low character players and hope that they can change. They don't believe in change. A lot of these people that's in, you know, the white collar America that's in a when I say white collar, I mean biz, like upper business management. They don't believe in, you know, second chances. Real talk. They a lot of them claim to be Baptists and Christians. You know, and, and that's a totally different ball game when you talk about Baptists and Christians, if you really want to get into it. But um, that's a totally different ball game. But a lot of them claim to believe in the Bible, claim to believe in St. Chances. They quote all these Bible verses, but they really don't believe the shit that they're saying. You know, they don't really believe people can change. They don't believe these players can change. They look at these players as savages, thugs, and all this other stuff, and they don't believe in putting the proper parameters and the proper security around them for them to to really blossom and actually be really, really good players in the long haul. But, hey, that's just what it is. The Lions don't take chances on, on, on questionable character players. Hey, it's Motor City Sports Talk. Once again, I appreciate everybody for checking in. One time for the one time. Blessings to you and yours. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. We won't miss another video. And um, we on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can reach out to the email. You can DM me on social media. All the information is in the description. You got video requests, question, business inquiry, or whatever situation may be. 
in addition to that, you can check out my other channel, Goodfellas Sports TV. Um, appreciate everybody who check out both. If you want to make a donation to the channel, that link's there as well, too. But continue to keep supporting the channel. One time for the one time. Motor Street Sports Talking Boy, CJ Goodfellas.